So today we shall see the disadvantages of traditional file systems. So uh, in the slide, it is being listed out data redundancy, inconsistency, accessing data, data isolation, integrity, atomicity, then uh, concurrent access, security. So let us see uh, all these uh, points one by one. Okay. So uh, the first one is data redundancy. So this is one of the disadvantage in the file processing system. So you might have seen yesterday I have uh, said an example of a banking system. So each official will be maintaining separate ledgers or um, books actually. In that the same customer's entry will be duplicated. Not only in bank, in hospitals, in colleges, every section should be uh, should maintain separate files and this will be uh, leading to a duplication of data a redundancy means duplication of the same data at various places okay so uh, the uh, files for example if uh, a person if a student is taking admission uh, in a college at the time of admission, he had to fill uh, a particular application form and all the details in the application form will be entered in a ledger or something. I mean, uh, a um, book or something, a record book or something in the office initially. And when he joins for a particular course, he will be uh, enrolled in the concerned department and in the department file also the same students data will be stored or maintained and when he uh, takes a library book or something he needs to uh, take a membership in library and uh, there also we have to store these students data so uh, if i am keeping a centralized system that is when the student enrolls or joins a college, um, if there is a centralized management system, only at a single point, the data will be entered. And this can be shared by anybody in the college, whether it is lab, uh, store, hostel, or whatever it is. So this can be avoided in the case of a, if I'm using a database system. So this was a disadvantage of the traditional file-based system. So a lot of files will be accumulated and it will be containing the same data also. And what happens is that this redundancy or duplication, it is leading to higher storage and access cost. And when I need to access a data, I have to um, go through all the uh, departments. So when the student needs to fill a node or something, uh, he needs to go to every department it seems. But in the case of a database system, that is we in our AES, we are following a node form actually. So the class teacher, he, uh, he or she can verify it and it can be forwarded. Only two or three signatures are there. So it is uh, actually we are maintaining um, a centralized database system which avoids this redundancy. And uh, next point is data inconsistency. Okay, so the various copies of the same data may be different. Suppose if the student changes his address, he might be uh, updating that in the office or he might be updating in the um, department only. Wherever his data is stored, this updation, it won't be propagated. Okay, so inconsistency of data. If he changes his address, if he changes his phone number, if he uh, changes his um, uh, branch or something. Okay, so, the same 
person's data will be inconsistent. That is, it won't be the same when I access from two locations. So a change in one place is not reflected elsewhere in the system. Okay, so that is another disadvantage in the case of a traditional file processing system. Okay, so two disadvantages we have, we have discussed. One is data redundancy and the second one is data inconsistency. And the next one is Sorry. Next one is difficulty in accessing data. So last day we have seen uh, while doing lab, uh, I can access data you by specifying a where condition. So uh, whoever who is residing at Cotton. I can easily access the data by specifying a simple condition. Okay. But in the case of a traditional uh, file processing system, I have to refer or go through a lot of um, files for getting the result. Example, to find out the names of all students who live in a particular postal code area. Conventional file processing environments do not allow needed data to be retrieved in a convenient and efficient manner. So more responsive data retrieval systems are required for general use. So in this case also, our database systems uh, saves a lot of time and uh, it uh, eases the um, usage also. And the next one is data isolation. Isolation means uh, the data, it may be uh, scattered in various files. For example, in our department, we might be following a different format. That same format, it won't be followed in the office or in some other departments like library, labs or something. Okay. So, um, format means not the font type and all. Uh, yesterday I have seen the, uh, shown you the order like um, roll number, name, like that I have shown you, no? That same format, it won't be followed there. For example, uh, if I am following, um, if I am storing the date of birth, some might be following uh, MMDDYY, some might be following DDMMYY, like that uh, misinterpretation may be there. So if I'm using a common structure or a common storage uh, or a common database, uh, this uh, format variation, it won't be there. Okay. So that is the fourth point. So data redundancy, data inconsistency, then difficulty in accessing data, data isolation. Okay. And the next problem is integrity problems. Okay. Integrity problems means, what is integrity? If I'm storing five, when I access that one, it should remain as five itself. It should not be changed to some other values. That is integrity. So uh, the data value stored in the database must satisfy certain types of consistency constraints. For example, um, some fields like um, if in the case of a bank, the account balance, it should never fall below zero. In a file system, I cannot enforce these constraints. But in the case of a database, I cannot uh, withdraw or transfer amount from my account if my um, this one account balance is zero. Okay, that is it should never go below zero. I can restrict by specifying some constraints that is integrity constraints I can impose on the database and I can uh, rectify the integrity problems. Whereas in the case of uh, a traditional file-based systems, this can, cannot be rectified. 
And the next one is atomicity problems. Actually, it is difficult to ensure atomicity in a, a conventional file processing system. What is atomicity? What is atomicity in uh, DBMS? Have you studied atomicity? Have you heard about uh, atomicity? So in a uh, conventional file processing system, it is very difficult to ensure atomicity. Atomicity means um, we know that atom, it cannot be subdivided or something. Okay, so either it should be full or it should be nothing. Only that condition is possible. So we are considering an example. Um, we have a program to transfer $500 from the account balance of department A to the account balance of department B. If a failure occurs during the execution of the program, either this dollar five hundred um, might might be removed from the balance of department A, but it was not credited to the balance of department B, and this leads to an inconsistent database state. Okay, so. Uh, this is because a system failure occurred after uh, A transferred this amount to B, but B didn't receive that. So we have to ensure consistency. Either we have to cancel that one. Either I have to update um, or credit that amount to department B, or I have to uh, refund that amount to the uh, department A. Okay, so this feature, it must happen in its entirety or not at all. Okay, so this feature is, it is termed as atomic or atomicity. Okay, so um, this can be done using a database system or use, using a database system only. I cannot ensure this one, um, that is atomicity using a traditional file based system. Okay. And the next one is concurrent access anomalies. What is concurrent access? Concurrent access anomalies means concurrent, concurrently, we are accessing. Uh, a particular uh, department or something. Okay. So we are considering department A uh, with an account balance of dollar 10,000. Uh, if two